I'm about to show you how to make the most epic Mad Hatter costume that blows the rest of these expensive Amazon costumes out of the water and for about as cheap as you can make it. So grab your DIY shoes and let's go. Now there's a lot of pieces to this costume and we aren't skimping out on any of them. First things first, the iconic Mad Hatter top hat. So we're starting with an oatmeal container to use as the base and some cardboard. Trace the lid of the oatmeal container and a larger plate on your cardboard and cut out both circles. This is gonna make the brim for the top hat. Next, trace that larger plate on another piece of cardboard and cut that one out as well. And then you're gonna wanna glue that piece to the bottom of your oatmeal container. This is gonna make the top part of the top hat. And I'm just reinforcing it with some more hot glue. Next, take the fabric you're gonna use for the hat. I found this table runner from the thrift store and I loved the pattern of it. However, you're gonna need about at least a four foot by four foot square and this wasn't big enough. So because this fabric was made with two layers, I was able to cut the layers and separate them. And I also ended up cutting it down the middle and then gluing the two sides together so that the square was even larger. If you're able to find a tablecloth or bed sheet, you can skip this entire step. Then I glued the cardboard to the center of that fabric. Then flip the cardboard back around and start gluing the fabric to the oatmeal container. The fabric sections should overlap and create some layers like this. You're gonna wanna tuck the fabric into the center of the hat. And I ended up wanting my hat a little bit shorter than the length of the oatmeal container. So I folded down the oatmeal container around the brim of the hat. Now with whatever fabric you have left, we're gonna cover the brim of the hat with that. Now trace your other piece of cardboard on the fabric, but add an extra three inches to the perimeter. And then go ahead and cut that out. Then we're gonna glue that to the cardboard and create slits on the inner side of the circle so that we can glue the inner side by folding up each piece individually. Then we're also gonna glue down the outer side and it should overlap again. Just make sure to glue down all the different layers. Now finally, we're gonna take the brim of the hat and glue it to the other part that we made. If I were to do this again, I would make the circle for the inside of the brim of the hat a lot smaller so that I can glue it down a lot easier to the top part of the hat. However, I just reinforced it with some extra glue and it worked out just fine. I found this cool scarf at a thrift store and I'm gonna use that to tie around the hat. I first folded it and glued it down to the width that I wanted and then just tied it on the hat. Now the Mad Hatter seems like a collectible kind of guy and he has some random things sticking out from the hat. First, I found these fake plants from the dollar store and I thought they would look really good. Then I also found this bag of feathers, also for a dollar, and decided to glue them together to make one giant feather. I started with gluing a piece of fabric to a skewer and then gluing down all the feathers in the color and the order that I wanted them. And I added some finishing touches with a silver paint pen and I thought it turned out pretty cool. Also using that silver paint pen, I decided to color three of the skewers and then stick some sparkly foam balls on the end of them. I made this cool spiral twisty design with wire and stuck the ball inside that for one of the skewers. And another one, I added a bunch of just random gems to it. But honestly, I would just look around your house and see what kind of random cool things you can find and see if you can stick them on a stick. Then on an index card, I wrote 10 over six because that's what he also has on his hat. If you know what that means, let me know, I'm curious. And I made the edges of it a little bit wavy. After that, it's just a matter of arranging and rearranging all the stuff on the hat until you get it where you like it and then glue it all down. Then just grab yourself a headband and glue it to the inside of the hat. I'd recommend using a stronger glue like E6000 and reinforcing it with some extra fabric. Now, I thought about buying a wig, but my hair was fading, so I decided to just dye my hair orange instead. I just did it when my hair was dry, sectioned it off, and just applied a lot of the product and left it on for like three hours. And I'm actually so excited with the way it turned out. Okay, I'm not gonna lie, this hat was a little time consuming, but it turned out so cool! Now that the most complex DIY is out of the way, we can move on. Quick pause, if you've liked my content this far, it would be awesome if you clicked that like button and if you think you wanna see more videos from me, it would be really cool if you subscribed. Okay, back to the video. The bow tie is one of the easiest DIYs and makes a huge statement. Start by taking a plain black or blue colored tie. I got mine at the thrift store and then some white acrylic paint. And all you gotta do is create a bunch of blobs and dots all over the tie with your white paint. And the best part is there is no way to mess up. Then go ahead and let that dry. And you're gonna go back in with bright colors and apply bright colored paint on top of the white. Make sure to get all the primary colors in there, red, yellow, and blue, and then fill in with some orange and green if you want to. And feel free to be as messy with this as you want. You can leave some white space, you can go over the lines, it doesn't have to be perfect and it shouldn't be. Then take some black paint and create some smaller blobs on top of the blobs that you already created. Now we're gonna set this aside and let it dry. 
Once it's dry, we're gonna create the shape of the bow. To do that, we're gonna start by taking the fat end of the tie and fold it over so it creates a bow-like shape. Then create two more folds just below it, kind of like creating a second bow, but it now should be with the skinny part of the tie. And make sure to leave a good amount of the tie left over because we need that for the strap around the neck and also the middle part of the bow. So go ahead and cut that part off and then glue down the fat bow and then the little skinny bow right below it. Next, we're gonna cinch the middle and create the bow shape that you want. You can hot glue it and also tie a string around for extra security if you want. Then measure the part that you want to wrap around the middle of the bow and cut that off from your leftover tie. But don't glue it on just yet. We're gonna make the part that goes around your neck now. I folded and glued the raw edge of the tie so that it has a bit of a smoother look. And then I added pieces of Velcro and a line towards the end of the tie. Make sure the Velcro is on the finished part of the tie that you want to be on the outside. Then I'm sticking the opposite side of the Velcro on top sticky side up and folding the other side of the tie on top so that it will match perfectly. Next, we're gonna attach that to the bow tie using the center piece that we didn't glue for the bow. Using that center strap, you're just gonna wanna wrap it around both the bow and the neck collar and then glue it down. I just love how vibrant all the colors came out and I think this tie really helps tie this whole look together. Now, if you thought that bow was easy, this next DIY is even easier. We are going in with the DIY lace detailed blazer. And I found this awesome maroon blazer from the thrift store. However, I had a hard time finding things that I liked with lace. But what I did find were these lace kind of looking doilies. I also had some lace fabric laying around. So I'm starting by cuffing the sleeves and turning them inside out so that we can glue on the underside of each sleeve. Then I'm taking my lace fabric and I'm just gluing it down around the sleeve and folding back a layer about every couple inches or so. Then I'm just gluing the two raw edges together. Now with the doily, I'm actually going to be folding it and cutting a circle in the center. The circle should ideally be the exact size of your sleeve. If it's a little smaller or bigger, that's gonna be just fine. And then I'm going around and gluing that just on top of the lace that I already put there. And because the doily is a little bit longer, you should be able to see both layers. And then I'm just repeating the same exact thing on the other sleeve. The best part of this DIY is you can get really creative with where you find the lace, whether it's doilies, old fabric, or from a dress you've outgrown. It really adds this extra element to your costume. Now we can check that one as completed. The next thing is my favorite addition. It's a spools of thread sash and it's really easy to do and completes the look and I think the best way possible. I got four of these sewing travel packs with 24 spools of thread each and each one was only $2. The only other thing you'll need is some twine. Start by cutting about an arm's length piece of your twine and then start threading your spools of thread on the twine in a random order. Then move the first spool of thread to the very center of that arm's length piece of twine. Then fold over the second spool of thread so that they're laying next to each other. Then using the opposite side of the twine, go ahead and thread in the opposite direction through the middle of the second spool of thread. Then pull each side tight and that is the first step for your chain. Now fold over the third spool of thread and you're gonna thread through the center of that one to the other side. You'll know you're doing it right if there is a piece of twine coming from both sides of each spool of thread once you're done with it. But that's basically it. You're gonna continue this process for as long as you want your sash to be. I ended up using about three and a half of these packs and it ended up being perfect. If you run out of twine, you might have to just tie on some more and then continue the process. Once you get to the end, just cross both pieces of twine Twine and tie them into a knot. Now to create the tie, I'm taking three more pieces of twine exactly the same length and I made it about three feet or so. Thread those three pieces of twine through the last spool of thread and then tie them in a knot together. Then I'm just braiding the twine all the way down by grouping them in sections of two. Then tie a knot on the end and do the same exact thing on the other side. This is by far my favorite accessory of the entire look. And it just blows my mind at how cheap it was to make. Now for this last DIY, it's gonna take you probably about 30 seconds. And right after I'll show you the rest of the costume and accessories that I pieced together. For these Mad Hatter gloves, all you gotta do is find a random pair of socks, either that you have laying around or go get them from the dollar store. If the socks are long enough, cut off the ankle part of the socks. If they're not, then just cut out the middle part of the socks. So cut off the toes and the heel. Then lay them flat and cut out a tiny hole on one of the sides. And that's it, your fingerless gloves. Maybe a little anticlimactic, but check out how cool they look with the lace fringe. Now for the styling, the rest of the clothes, and the accessories. I found this corset on Amazon, and I also found this skirt on Amazon. But if you spend a little time at a thrift store, I'm sure you could find stuff that's just as good. These scarves I got for a dollar, I used to stuff in my pockets. This necklace is from a yard sale, believe it or not. I got these really big hoops from Forever 21. 
These are rings I've collected over time, I've made, or got from Forever 21. These boots were a $2 thrift store find and I was so excited about them. And the pinstripe tights are also from Forever 21. And if you wanted to opt for a more feminine version of the costume, you could scrap the jacket altogether. Because we have so many well-known Mad Hatter accessories, it's still very noticeably the Mad Hatter with the jacket or without. As you probably noticed, the majority of this costume came from the thrift store. So here's a quick tip. If you have time to go and search for stuff at the thrift store, you're gonna find things for a lot cheaper and probably a lot cooler things. And if you're the ultimate bargain shopper, I would recommend going to local thrift stores rather than chain thrift stores like Goodwill because you'll find things for a lot cheaper and often even better. If you're curious where I found my clothing and accessories, I'll have them all linked in the description below. And there you have it, the most epic DIY Mad Hatter costume. And if you happen to recreate this costume, I would love to see it, so feel free to send me pictures and videos on my Instagram. If you're going down an Alice in Wonderland rabbit hole, I have some really cool Alice in Wonderland makeup looks that you can find right here. And if you want another really cool Halloween costume, I have a DIY Lava Girl costume that you can find right here. And if you want to see what other epic videos I have in store, then feel free to subscribe. And I'll see you in one of my next videos. What does he do? Butter whacker.